July 10th, the Seven Brothers and St. Felicity Martyrs. The illustrious martyrdom of these saints happened at Rome under the Emperor Antoninus. According to their legend, Felicity was a noble woman who, after the death of her husband, served God in a state of widowhood and employed herself in prayer and works of charity. By the example of this lady and her family, many idolaters were moved to embrace the faith of Christ. This angered the pagan priest who complained to the emperor that the boldness with which Felicity practiced the Christian religion drew many from the worship of the immortal gods, who, on that account, would be angry with the city and the state. The emperor was prevailed upon to send an order to Publius, the prefect of Rome, and he caused the mother and her sons to be apprehended and brought before him. He took Felicity aside and used the strongest inducements to bring her to sacrifice to the gods, that he might not be obliged to proceed with the severity against her and her sons. But she answered, Do not think to frighten me by these threats, or to win me by fair speeches the spirit of god within me will not suffer me to be overcome and will make me victorious over all your assaults unhappy woman replied publius if you wish to die die but do not destroy your children my children she said will live eternally if they are faithful but must expect eternal death if they sacrifice to idols the next day the prefect sent for felicity and her sons again and said take pity on your children felicity they are in the bloom of youth the mother answered your pity is impiety and your words cruel then turning towards her children she said my sons look up to heaven where jesus christ with his saints expects you be faithful in his love and fight courageously for your souls publius commanded her to be beaten saying you are insolent to give them such advice in my presence in contempt of the orders of our prince he then called the boys to him one after another and mixed promises with threats to induce them to worship to the gods but they refused and after being whipped were remanded to prison the prefect laid the whole process before the emperor who gave an order that they should be sent to different judges to be condemned to different deaths januarius was scourged to death felix and philip were beaten with clubs sylvanius was thrown henlog into the tiber and alexandra vitalis and martial were beheaded the same sentence was executed upon the mother last of all of the death of saint felicity saint augustine says wonderful is the sight set before the eyes of our faith we have heard with our ears and seen with our minds a mother choosing for her children to finish their course before herself contrary to human instincts but she did not send away her sons she sent them on she looked on them as beginning life not as finishing it they gave up a life in which they had to die and began to live the life that is endless it was not enough that she had to look on we are yet more astonished that she encouraged them she was more fruitful in her courage even than her womb seeing them contend she contended and in the victory of each one she was victorious st gregory the great delivered a homily on the festival of st felicity in the basilica of her name in the year 590 in it he says that this saint having seven children was much afraid of leaving them behind her on earth as other mothers are surviving of theirs she was more than a martyr for seeing her seven children martyred before her eyes she was in some sort a martyr in each of them she was the eighth in the order of time Time, but was from the first to the last in anguish beginning with her martyrdom in the eldest and finishing it in her own death she received a crown not only for herself but likewise for all her children seeing them in torments she remained constant feeling their agony by nature as their mother but rejoicing for them in her heart by hope st gregory admonishes us all in his final words consider this woman and consider what we will weigh in front of her we who are virile by the body often when we propose to do good it is enough for a word even insignificant sprung against us from the mouth of a mocking so that our resolution to act bends immediately and that disassembled we recoil here in many cases words keep us from doing a good work even when the tortures could not deflect felicity in her holy resolutions we stopped by the light breath of a nasty word it was by the sword that she flung herself into the kingdom neglecting as nothing what stood in way of her resolution we do not want to abide by the commandments of the lord by giving alms of our goods even if we have too much she not only brought her fortune to god but she also gave for himself her own flesh 
When we lose our children by the divine will, we weep without being consoled. She would have cried them dead if she had not offered them. When the rigid judge comes for that terrible examination, what can we say at the sight of the glory of this woman? In what will the weakness of their hearts excuse men when they are shown that woman who, besides the world, has conquered her sex? Let us follow, dear brothers, the austere and harsh path of the Redeemer. Despise all the goods of the present life. They are worthless, since they can pass. Shame to love what we are sure to lose very quickly. Let us not be dominated by the love of earthly things, nor swell with pride, nor tear with anger, nor defile with lust, nor consume with envy. It is for our sake, dear brothers, that our Redeemer is dead. Also learn to defeat ourselves for the sake of Him. If we know how to do it perfectly, not only will we escape the punishment that threatens us, but we will receive the reward of glory with the martyrs. For although we are not persecuted, peace also knows its kind of martyrdom even if we do not offer our heads in flesh we carry the spiritual sword in our soul to put to death carnal desires 